Hey, thank you for joining us for another episode of Talk with the Badge. We're joined by Detective Hirota of the High Tech Crimes Division from the Sacramento County Sheriff's Office. Detective, thank you so much for joining us. And I imagine that your life has been very busy dealing with a myriad of, of issues with high tech crimes. Oh, absolutely. And thanks once again for, for having me. Um, it was always busy, but now it's even busier than it was before. So it's definitely, I think, going to get worse. So um, there's no break for us here. How is the 2020, the last 12 months, uh, being in quarantine, the staying at home orders, how has that impacted uh, high tech crimes? It, what relation do they have? have? Have they rose because of more people being online at home, et cetera, et cetera? Yes. And I think it's it's crazy because before the, the pandemic, um, you know, p people didn't realize it was such a, a problem. But then as the pandemic came around, um, it's it's multiplied for us as um, law enforcement across the country. Um, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, who gets the cyber tips, um, the cyber tips across the country um, have gone up, you know, hundreds of uh, percent. But for us um, um, here at the Sacramento area, I mean, our um, cyber tips have increased with um, children being at home um, doing distance learning and their parents being at home being you know busy trying to, to do work themselves um, and just by giving their their kids these devices online predators are, are a scary thought and that's and I imagine that's one of the highest priorities that you deal with in in your division and uh, what kind of what kind of tips do you get what kind of um, what kind of you know, hidden things are going on online that our kids could be vulnerable to, like online games and online chats. I mean, is there a way that they've been concealed or kids are getting drawn into it and you're having to combat that? Well, we've been, been interviewing some kids um, and in speaking with them, some of them have told me that they've um, felt depressed and isolated because they don't have access to their friends um, or, you know, their friends at school. And so they're using the internet as a means to fulfill their um minds with something that's more than just sitting at home watching television. So it's a social place for them to go. So they'll get on these apps um, or those gaming uh, devices, you know, like PlayStation or Xbox. Um, a couple of the popular games are Among Us, Roadblocks, and uh, a new one I just heard is Adopt Me. And so the kids are bored. So they get on there and they start chatting and the predators know that. They know that these kids are vulnerable and depressed. And so they do and say nice things to them to make them feel better. Are there any apps like the ones you mentioned, but are there other apps where they, they conceal themselves to be something that they're not that, that, you know, on the face value, they might seem like a legitimate app that's entirely something different. And then the children are using that and then, uh, you know, uh, being vulnerable to predators online. I don't think there's necessarily an app that we've actually come across, um, as you described, but it's generally any app. Um, that kids are getting onto either a being themselves or portraying themselves to be you know older so that they know that older people will talk to them. Um, so at, at this point, it's just any type of app that the kids have access to, um, where they can chat with somebody else um, and not just be in a in a you know a room or just looking at social media. They're actually in a room and are communicating with people. We talked about the about kids feeling isolated and alone and, you know, their their entire lives being turned upside down, being stuck in home and wanting to reach out to people and communicate. And it's really cut down on their ability to socialize, you know, normally or in person with other kids is the fact that people are the fact that kids are at home and on their computers more and looking for these outlets to connect to people. The fact that they can't socialize, has it made it worse? for you? Has it made, has it made the uptick in, in, in cyber crimes and, and online predators worse? And have you seen an increase in that in your position? Oh, absolutely. So our task force, we have, you know, full-time sheriff's office or detectives in addition to outside agencies who are in our building on the task force along with the FBI. And we are so inundated with cyber tips that unfortunately we're having to triage them. And so the ones that we're mainly looking at are the ones with uh, kids who are vulnerable, who are talking to adults. Um, you know, they're, they're as young as seven years old who are, who are getting themselves in these situations where they're talking to people they shouldn't be talking to. So those are the ones that we try to triage to do first so that way we can rescue kids so we can prevent them from sending photos of themselves and becoming suicidal or actually going out and meeting people. 
But what can parents do to identify if this may be happening in their own home? Because I mean, the, the reality is, is that you can be the best parent in the world and the most attentive parent in the world, but you also have a life to, to work, to provide. You're dealing with the stresses of the quarantine or, or the stay-at-home orders and working from home, and you're distracted a lot of the times, and that's, that happens to a lot of parents. But what, what are some tips that you can give parents that are watching that they can maybe pick up on some hints that their kids may be, you know, vulnerable or involved in these kind of crimes by predators. You know, it's so crazy that you say that because I myself was living this um, and thinking to myself, this is really difficult because in the beginning we were working from home and have a, a child, you know, in this age range. And it was crazy to, and to see my friends and family doing this same thing or struggling to how do you even manage this because you're busy, you're trying to work. Right. Um, and so it's so easy to know that your kids are on their devices doing their schoolwork. And then when they're bored, it's like give them their devices because you know that's what makes the kids happy um, is to be on their devices. Sure. So some of the things is, I mean, you first have to communicate with your kids right off the bat. Um, you need to go and talk to them about the internet. Um, you need to talk to them uh, because unfortunately there's no way for us as parents because I didn't grow up with this. So a lot of people didn't grow up with this. So we're just trying to figure out how the heck do we even get and maneuver through right. this. It's all new to a lot to a lot of us, right? It's all new to, to parents who didn't have exposure to this kind of stuff. Now they have their own kids who are exposed to this stuff. Yes. And we're like, how, how do we even do this? And so it's it's definitely a learning process. But I mean, just like I've, I've said this before, like if, when you give your kids a car, you're going to teach them the rules of the road. And that's exactly what you need to do with the, with the devices, because essentially those devices, you give them to your kids, they're in their bedroom, and literally you have the entire world, people from other countries who have access to your children. We don't need to worry about, you know, someone breaking in the window. I mean, they have access to your kids in their bedroom. It's incredible that you'd say that because, you know, I, I think of myself, I'm, I'm 36 and I, I'm thinking of my generation, the way I grew up. When we were growing up, it was lock your doors and make sure that nobody breaks in and uh, and now we're and now it's like people are breaking in virtually yeah, into your absolutely. into into the most private and sacred areas of your life in in your children who are the most beloved and precious in your life and that is such a scary thought now i mean because of the 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 evolution of technology it has become such a high priority now the threat is everywhere in the world yeah. not just on your front door or your window Yes. Even for us as adults, you know, our accounts get hacked and, and things like that happen to us. So um, just imagine with kids who are seven, eight years old, they're not mature yeah. enough to handle any of this stuff. Um, Would you say that 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 <clears throat> dealing that that online predators dealing with uh, the safety for children online is your number one priority in your role right now? Oh, you know, absolutely. So if we can get the word out and, and just remind parents, like you have to communicate. Once you've communicated to your kids, um, explain to them that if anything is to happen to you, you know, give them an outlet so that they are able to come to you, not be afraid. Because that's the problem. Some of these kids will end up thinking, okay, if I send a photo of myself to this predator, well, in their minds, it's their friend. Friend, um, right. And they'll send it to them and they think they're going to go away. But in fact, that person will never go away. They will continue to ask for more photos and more egregious photos. And then that's one of the big cases besides online enticement. It's extortion. They're extorting these children for photos, nude photos of themselves. So, sure. you know, you got to tell kids, do not send photographs to people that you don't know. And people that you think you might know, you know, you have to actually know who these people are, like your friends. Don't just be friends with them because somebody else was friends with them. Um, don't take pictures of yourself um, in, the, in your bedroom. In, in the Sacramento area, I mean, it happens everywhere in this country, but in the Sacramento area, I understand that there is a huge amount of, of tra trafficking, sex trafficking, and they're using these tools, these predators are using these tools in order to accomplish their goals, is that right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's their main platform in order to um, groom groom girls um, and boys and, and get them to meet with them out. That's why we try to, to stop that before it happens. Um, but that's their platform on how they do it, because obviously, you know, we're not going out to the mall where you can you know pick up people. Um, so it's, it's all online. You have children of your own. Is that what you were saying? Yes. Or a child of your own? Yes. May I ask a question to you personally? How has this affected you and your attitudes and your policies at home towards your kids and how they use technology? Because the, the reality is, is that it's nearly impossible to keep them away from their devices. So, I mean, do you take a, I mean, like what, sometimes I feel like if you're faced with something and you're seeing the underbelly of it as, as a detective in this, in this uh, area, you can either take it to an extreme and cut them off from all their devices and do everything you can, or you can find a middle ground. How do you personally handle it, if you don't mind me asking? 
Um, just a flip phone. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I think that's the best thing ever. Um, it, it's, it's been definitely um, a challenging situation just because I see people around me and I get phone calls weekly from friends and family and coworkers who are asking, like, how do you even manage to deal with this? And the best thing for you to do is you really do need to look at your kids' phones. I know it's a pain in the butt. I, I completely agree because when I do it, I'm like, this is a lot of work. Um, if you, you have to go through their cell phones. You have to see what they're doing and um, make sure that you, um, you know, there, there are some watchdog apps that you could put on on their phones so that you can see if they're searching for certain particular words or if, you know, curse words are coming up or if they're saying photos based on skin tone that appear to be nude, um, which on our um, Sac Valley High Tech Crimes Task Force website, we, we do have resources there that we can, um, people can look for. Um, but it's mainly is, is Difficult as, as it is, you have to just go through your kids' phones. I mean, that's the best way to do it and see what they're doing. I mean, that's that's what you're going to do. I bet that's really tough as a parent for, uh, and for you and for those people who are watching. It's like you don't want to – you want to learn boundaries and you want, you don't want to violate the privacy of, of your child and make them feel, you know, insecure or controlled. But at the same time, the threat is so high. Yes. You have to find a middle ground, right? You, you really, you it. have to, I mean, and when we do presentations, that's one of the questions that comes up from parents or the kids. Um, what about their privacy? Well, you know, unfortunately, as sad as it is until your child is 18 years old, that's you right. are responsible for them. You're so, right. you know, it's then, it's just something that has, it's a new thing and privacy. I understand maybe in their bedroom, but this is the internet. Like the world, like I said, has access to your kids. So you have That's to protect right. them. You have to, because kids who get involved in this, they get suicidal and we don't want that to happen. Right. And, and, you know, I know that, like you said, we're, you're learning even in this moment, the information and the new problems that are coming about and popping up, everybody, parents and you as a detective, you're learning as you, every day, as you go along, because you don't have a complete picture still on the kind of threats that are out there. Absolutely. That's why the best thing to do is just, you have to just monitor their devices. Um, you know, another thing too, is when you talk to your kids about creating accounts, make sure that they um, create accounts that aren't providing, you know, personal identifying information about themselves, like their name and their date of birth. Um, you know, photos in the background have information that were revealed. Their neighborhood, the home. Yeah. Yeah. Like don't take them with your numbers on front of your house. Cause we've had plenty of cases where predators were able to find kids because of the stuff that's in the background, has their birth date, their school, their cheer, you know, cheerleading team, football team. This is why we really appreciate our, our friends at the Sacramento County Sheriff's Office because we were able to draw awareness to a lot of these issues. And in fact, you guys are having an internet safety day coming up on March 5th, which is what, I mean. Just, uh, just around the corner, actually. Yes. Yeah, so we're hoping to, to get some more information out there for the for families um, to with w definitely more information and, and links for people. Um, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children has the cyber tip line where if you come across, you know, any of your kids or any of your friends' kids, because uh, I've had my child's kids' friends come up to me and say, hey, I was on Roblox chatting, and they're eight years old, and somebody said, hey, what's your, what's your name and date of birth? Um, wow. That's and brazen. It's, I can't believe it. Yeah. And then one of them said, you know, my, um, my cousin died. Can you send me some photos? And I'm like, it just, it just hit me. I'm like, this is crazy. They're just on Roblox playing games. I think as adults, I mean, to us, it's like common sense. Of course we wouldn't share that information, mm -hmm. but that's the vulnerability of a child. I mean, they're, they're going through life and they're trying to figure out who are my friends and who am I? And you know, how, uh, you know, how do I get, how do I get people to like me and necessary, not necessarily sometimes in healthy ways. And that's unfortunately what's happened. I think with technology and the internet, right? It's, it, it's mm -hmm. like people are finding their kids are finding their self-esteem and their acceptance through strangers yes, online. They are. So that's why don't let your kids, um, um, you know, be in their bedroom as the younger they are. Don't let them be in their bedroom with their cell phone or their devices for that matter. Just don't let them do it. How, how has you, spoofing and phishing, um, the numbers on, on those things gone up with people being with uh, adults and people buying things online and answering emails and clicking those, those, uh, fake emails that may lead to mining their data or getting information out of them. Has that gone up as well in the last 12 months in the last day uh, during the pandemic? Yes, actually, if you if you were to go to to Google that, it's quite interesting the amount of um, ID um, identity theft or um, hacking that's been going on because people are at home, um, you know, and they're bored, and so these predators and these also these hackers are just going onto people's accounts, knowing that more people are at home using their devices. Um, so, I mean, I personally have been getting an inundation of text messages and phone calls in the last couple months. Mm -hmm. With even though a lot of us have those block functions on our phone, they still keep calling. 
Yeah, I, I experienced that myself this morning. Ironically, yes. I, keep getting, I keep getting these robocalls or these yes. calls that appear to be from a legitimate phone number, mm -hmm. and then I, I end up like being curious and calling them back, and the number is disconnected. I'm like, well, clearly somebody is spoofing yeah. or doing something. And you know, an interesting story. What's really scary? Just two weeks ago, I had a friend who received an email that appeared to be legitimate from, ironically, the FBI. It literally, the address was, I don't remember the person's name, at FBI.gov, and it looked real. Yes. And she's like, what's going on here? Should I give this person my information? What is this? But after researching and contacting the FBI, she found out that it was, in fact, fake. Yes. So it, it's getting to that degree where you can't even tell truth from yes. our fa fakeness or you know falseness from reality. It's, it's hard to tell. People are really confused and scared. Yeah. And just like you said, that's a great example because I've gotten a text message that says, you know, your package from Amazon is and So that's exactly. another thing. And people are obviously at home. They're buying more things on the, on sure. the Internet. So sure. you just have to go straight to the source. So if you're getting an Amazon link or FedEx link, you just need to go straight to the actual site itself or right. call the phone number. Don't click right. on any it's links. So easy to get an email link that looks legitimate and click it. And then all of a sudden you're in you're in hot water. Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Detective, is there a, a, what part of is there a website or is there a place that we can go to that we can submit tips or information or ask questions about these kind of crimes? Well, if somebody wanted to submit a tip with regards to um, internet uh, children um, crimes, then you would go to um, one eight hundred the lost t h e l o s t, which mm -hmm. is a phone number you can call for the national center. Uh, they're the clearinghouse for cyber tips. Um, they're the ones that had the milk cartons with the missing children on them. So they do the cyber tips. Sure. And then they have a website that you can go to. It's um, just cyber tips um, and then cybertips.org. And then um, the net smarts, and that's N E T S M A R T Z, um, which is on our website for Sacramento Sheriff's um, Office um, high tech website that has a lot of resources for parents. It's got videos, it's got brochures, and they're all age appropriate. And they're, they've updated them since the pandemic too. So there's a lot of new fresh material. Very good. Detective Christy Hirota from the High Tech Crimes Division. We appreciate you joining us so much for Talk with the Badge. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for your I time. And, and thank you for everything you do in the community too. We really appreciate you. Thank you for protecting us and our children. Thank you so much for getting thank the you. word out there. It's our pleasure. Thanks. Bye-bye.